Did you know that making chainmail armor is really similar to knitting? Because it is, and that's kind of weird. So my seventh grade English teacher was really into the Middle Ages and knights and swords and stuff. So he made his own chainmail shirts and things and brought them in to show us. That made me look into how chainmail armor was made. And I ended up making some small pieces of it myself, which amazingly, I still have 20 years later. Uh, you know, can't find my fifth pair of scissors that I uh, bought a month ago, but at least I still have my amateur middle school projects. Anyway, many years later, I see a photo on Reddit of one of these knitted baby bearded face warmers uh, with hat. And I was just struck with curiosity. I thought, you know, how do you even do that? And so I just started looking into it, beginning with the Wikipedia page on knitting, which included uh, the diagram of standard stockinette structure, which made me go, wait a minute. That looks just like chainmail. So I watched some tutorial videos on YouTube and started knitting some simple things up and realized that knitting and making chainmail are even more similar than they initially looked. Like to start making chainmail, you need to split rings to link together. The easy way to make a bunch of these is to, to wrap wire around a dowel to get a spring and then cut down the spring in a straight line. That gives you a bunch of split rings, but wrapping around the wire looks just like wrapping yarn around straight needles for a cast on to start the first row of knitting. And as you're knitting, you classically work two knitting needles at once, pulling each new loop of yarn through an old loop. With chainmail, each new ring is linked through old rings and then needs to have it split closed. With heavy gauge wire, this is best done with pliers in each hand perhaps of the needle nose variety. So you really end up knitting the rings together. And the end results do look similar, a fact that has been exploited by people to make uh, cheap and lightweight faux chainmail armor for film and cosplay. They both essentially serve the same purpose. They take a raw material, wire and yarn respectively, and organize it into an interlinked structure to create a fabric with more flexibility than a straight weave of those materials would produce. Metal wire is quite stiff, but organized in linking rings, you get a material that is still hard and protects against cuts, but moves like woven fabric. Yarn is flexible, but not elastic. However, when you organize it into linked loops, you get an accordion structure that flexes in either direction, like elastic fabric. In both cases, the symmetric organization of the material increases its flexibility beyond what the raw material naturally provides. It's, it's almost like the macro level version of something like carbon nanotubes, where you're changing material properties through careful structural engineering. Anyway, just, just something interesting I wanted to share. It's one of those things that makes you see how interconnected the world is and how the same patterns and concepts repeat throughout history in different disciplines and realize that nothing has really changed in hundreds of years. And there's only like three things in the world that just get repackaged over and over and life is devoid of any real novelty or joy. Well, time to knit myself up a vodka and tonic.